Tech Sideline is presented by First Bank and Trust Company, a nationally ranked community-focused bank with over 30 locations throughout Virginia, Northeast Tennessee, and North Carolina. Who you choose to bank with can make all the difference. Visit firstbank.com to learn more. Welcome in, Tech Sideline fans. This is TSL Podcast Episode 355. I'm Tech Sideline founder Will Stewart, and this is a different kind of podcast. we got some special guests here that I'll introduce here in a second. We've got Evan Hughes and uh, Jake Lyman, former TSL Podcast hosts. Um, so, fellas, you, you, might, you guys have both made podcast history here at Tech Sideline. You might be making a different kind of history today. So here's a story. We have so many good people working for us now that I'm not on the podcast very often. So I've been dreaming up this, what can I do? And I have this working title called Founders Corner, where I just, I do a podcast. It's just me and typically one other person. In this case, it's two. And we just shoot the bull for whatever and talk about whatever. Now, have you guys ever listened to the Joe Rogan podcast? Uh, A little bit. Rogan, Rogan is like that. When his podcasts start, he's already talking. They don't do ad reads and intros and stuff like that. And, and it's just this free form discussion. So holding up this up for the camera, this is my script today. It's got like, I don't know, nine lines on it. And uh, so this is either going to be great and everybody's going to be like, Will, you need to do that. Or it's going to be an abject failure. Either way, you guys are making history. So again, I'm Tech Sideline founder Will Stewart. And let's introduce our two guests today. To my right in his original host chair. We have the OG of TSL podcast host, Evan Hughes, the, who is now the voice of Virginia Tech women's basketball. Welcome in, Evan. Great to be back. Thanks for having me, Will. And over here in the chair he sat in as host after we moved the host chair is, uh, you know, the, the heir to the throne <laughs> after Evan departed, Jake Lyman, who hosted the T- TSL podcast for a while. And Jake is now the voice of women's basketball for Vanderbilt. So Jake, welcome back in. Thank you. Uh, a week ago, I don't think I could have imagined I'd be sitting here, but here we are. Very cool. <laughs> so um, how does it feel, guys, the, to be back in the uncomfortable chairs? It, it's it's strange to be back. I don't know when I left here for my last podcast in October of 2022. I don't know if I ever thought that I'd be sitting in one of these chairs again. So uh, it's a little strange, but we're really happy to be back. It's very cool. It, yeah. it, it's hard to believe that for me in August, three years will have passed. Like you sit back down, this is the same table. The the set looks great, by the way, all the additions that you've made over the years. Uh, it, to me, it's just kind of like they say that time flies the older you get. And it's like, wow, it's it's been two and a half years since the last time I hosted a podcast, which is just crazy. I could not be more proud of all the work that has gone into this podcast and the show being what it is today. So that segues into something I wanted to bring up, you know, and I tell people this all the time. Evan is the inventor of the Tech Sideline Video Podcast. All right. So so we did him when, when our office was in Radford, we did... Um, I won't say how many podcasts we did because that's a trivia question later. And they were all audio. Then we moved over to Blacksburg and we were doing audio podcasts. Uh, we brought you in as the host mm-hmm. and we were doing audio podcasts for a while. And we had, it was basically a conference table. And you and Chris and I would sit around the conference table, turn on the audio recorder on days when we remembered to turn it on. There was one day we got like 40 minutes in and had to start it all over. <laughs> That was awful because that was my <laughs> fault. I'm the one who's supposed to turn the recorder on. And one day I did not. So one day we're sitting there and Evan comes in. And he's like, hey, let's set my phone up at the end of the table and stream it live out of her Facebook. <laughs> and I was like, what are you talking about? You know, how, how does this work? So so we got this this goofy tripod we did. <laughs> and we set it up at the end of the table and put I think we put your iPhone up there. We did. And somehow figured out to live stream over Facebook and and. Oh, the audio was terrible. Oh, it was so bad. There was no mic. It was just the, the, I mean, it was literally like this on the end of the table. That's right. You bought, like, I think it clipped on to maybe the side of the table. Yeah, well, see the thing hanging on the wall over there yes. that holds the spy cam? It's that kind of thing. Yeah, it, it, it was, I just was like, Will, you know, like we, you know, I think we did maybe like six months of that. My first year would have been 18, 19, that, um, that school year. And I was like, Let's engage some of our fans. Because at the time, we would just record. By the way, the podcast episodes at that point, if you remember, were, were literally like 40 minutes. Yeah, they, they were, were actually pretty quick. Short. Yep. And then let's get the fans. Because I, I remember initially, you wanted to put questions. Like, if you have a question, put it on the board. 
and we'll get to the next. And we did that for six months. And I remember you being so receptive to that idea of, and we would, I, I think the only commenter we would get on Facebook live, uh, Forgive me, I should not be forgetting his name. The the great tech football player uh, in the '90s who always oh commented. Jeff Holland, Jeff Holland. So Jeff course. would comment on the Facebook. Jeff uh, would comment on the Facebook, and then one of my favorite stories, not to go on this tangent. Well, this so, is what we're here for. We're here for tangents. <laughs> so I leave. I, I well, actually, let me let me back up. Doing TSL, this was a dream come true. I remember exactly where I was. Uh, it was finals week of my freshman year, so this would have been spring of '18. Mm-hmm. And I was studying for final with a friend. We got hungry at like 1 a.m. And we were walking to like the McDonald's, I think, or DP Doe. And Bill Roth shoots me a te- No, 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 no. Somehow I find out that you guys are looking for a podcast host. Right. And I remember texting Bill. I've, I never met you, never met Chris. I texted him. I said, please do whatever you can to help me land this job. No I kidding. really want it. Well, we had made the decision at that point in time to move over here from Radford, and that was going to happen in the summer of 2018. And, uh, yeah, we did not have a podcast host at that point in time. So I'm sure I talked to Bill about all that stuff. And uh, Bill said, I got the perfect guy for you. And that's probably when he hit you up. And I remember when I went to St. Cloud, which is where Jake went to uh, after my three years, and I remember getting the call from you and Chris. We did, like, this conference call, and it was like this – kind of formal meeting of like, hey, can we like verbally agree to this contract here? And at the time, you hired me to be the podcast host and the wrestling beat writer. That is correct. We, we have articles in our archives that you wrote about wrestling. And I am not a good writer. And I remember just being like, God, I want to host the podcast. I'll do whatever it takes. <laughs> but, now, but, wait a minute. In a minute, we're going to get to what Jake had to do before he got this, to be podcast host. Oh, yeah, that's right. Host. Well, I never had to do what I, I don't want to give it away. I never had to do that. But it was great because I ended up calling a lot of tech wrestling and became really close to Coach Roby and followed the sport. And so right. it went hand in hand. But anyways, my other tangent, I leave after my first year and we're doing the, the Facebook stream and I go away for three months. Haven't heard from Will. Right. So so you've been hosting the podcast throughout the your, my your first sophomore year, year. My sophomore year of college. Yeah. And then what you're talking about is the summer after you went to go up to St. Cloud. Yep. Okay. And I, it's like three days before I come back for Blacksburg. And I just get this long text from Will. Hey, I bought, I, I brought, I, uh, I built a, a podcast studio. What do you think? And it's this. And I was like, oh my God. Like Will just like went into overdrive and built this set. And I think it was at that point for me, like the wheels started turning. Like we already had a, a good following yeah. audio wise, yeah. but the TSL podcast became what it is today, 1920, my second year. Yeah. At, at that point in time, we were getting 2000 to 4,000 audio downloads, but we were only doing about 500 to a thousand people on the live stream. And, and once we, uh, first of all, we moved from Facebook to YouTube. And when you say that, this set was built no it looked much worse the walls were up and that was about it and one of the things we need to do is we need to put an evolution of the tsl podcast set video on yes. on yeah. youtube but uh so the story behind that that was summer 2019 uh one of my models in this in this sports media world is texags.com which covers texas a&m and they're they're a very well-developed organization and uh we flew down there in the summer of 2019 to see their set that they do Texags radio from. They're they're on. They have a more of a table that the higher table that they sit around, but it's a multi camera setup. And uh, we went down there and got inspired and came back. And uh, John Donna, who works at uh, Yobo and, and does all of our programming and some of our business planning stuff, he came here for a week and built this. He built the walls and the floor. We we had one camera. A, a bad camera. All right, so we, man, I don't. You can't zoom in, but it, but it's literally <laughs> three walls, two curtains, and a big TV hanging on the wall behind. <laughs> Which, by the way, could have fallen over at any point. At, at any moment. T- I don't know if you, I don't. I'm going to try and zoom in here as best I can. I don't know if you, but I, I uh, for the viewers. And by the way, here's what it looked like. The set. Yeah, it was. It was the cow. This is. We just had the helmets, kind of similar to what right. it looks like here. Yep. But yeah, there's like kind of like porch furniture there. Yeah. Which was great. But right. this TV was massive up there. Oh, that was I like, mean, a, oh, that's this a, thing could have fallen over <laughs> on your head. 
any point. And and after after a few weeks, that TV did start to drag the wall that was mounted on Ford, and it started to move. But the story behind the furniture, when we were trying to figure out what furniture to put on the podcast set, my wife is like, go buy Big Lots. And I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm not going by Big Lots. Well, when John Donna was in town that week, we went by Big Lots, and for like 700 bucks, I got porch furniture, <laughs> and that's what we did the show from was the porch furniture. Oh, very cool. So, so that was the the genesis of it. And uh, um, so let's uh, let's see. Um, I want to ask you guys some trivia. All right. So the first one is, and and if you haven't figured it out yet, this podcast isn't about Virginia Tech sports. It's about the Tech Sideline podcast. <laughs> so if you've been with us, you're finding this interesting. Evan, what was the number of the first podcast you ever did? Forty eight. No, close. I I would think it's somewhere in the forty five to fifty five range. I feel good about that. It was forty. Okay. Um, looking on the website, we we filed those first five or six as TSL staff. So if you looked it up by Evan Hughes, it was number forty five. Once I figured it out, the description for number forty says we introduce our new podcast host, Evan Hughes. So, Jake, what was the first podcast that you did? I'm trying to do math in my mind because I remember I had to miss episode 200 um, because I was out of town. And I know that was in about October of 2021. So I'm going to go 182 is my guess. I have written down 186. Mm. Okay. So I was in the ballpark. (laughs) But before you became our regular podcast host... You did a podcast with Tony Rowe. You're right. I did. That was... That was October of 2019. Yes. I will never go back and watch that podcast or listen to and it. And I remember <laughs> I had a camp for my parents that weekend. Yeah, you couldn't be there. And that's right. You, you, you did that one. And this is before I had covered wrestling for TSL. I, I was the wrestling beat writer the next season, yeah. I believe. So I came in here... Never having watched a wrestling duel before, um, I did all of my, I think I got asked to do it maybe 48 hours in advance. So I was, <laughs> I was prepping all weekend to get ready and I will never listen back to that podcast. I think it was, it was basically just me going through weight classes and be like, so coach Roby, so what about this one, 133, what's going on there? <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's, it's classic TSL. We didn't train him or prepare him at all. We just we just put him in the chair and said go. One one quick tangent if I may. I remember episode 100. Mm-hmm. I need someone to re or to find the graphic the that thumbnail. was made because there's a picture of Chris Coleman smoking a cigar. <laughs> it is hysterical and it is on the cover photo of episode 100. Yeah. I need to see that again. It is laugh out loud funny. Yeah, so if, if you Google Tech Sideline Podcast episode 100, you know, it, it'll come up and you'll be able to see that thumbnail. <laughs> so tell me who made that thumbnail up. No. Malcolm? Malcolm. The greatest podcast producer in the <laughs> land. <laughs> Remember, so uh, so in the early days of Tech Sideline Podcast, once, once we went video and we actually set up cameras and things like that, Malcolm was a student, uh, I think... Wasn't he a year behind you, or were you guys the same year? He We're the same year. 2021, right. Yep. So he would have been um, going into your junior year. He would have been a junior. So, uh, yeah, Malcolm shaped a lot of what you see in terms of, now that boy liked to spend my money. <laughs> um, so, but it was. I figured out early on, he's like, I'm going to buy this. And I, and I figured out early on, tell him yes to everything he wants because – like one of my dad's hallmarks was whatever he did, if he worked on the house or worked on the car, he did it cheap and he was unsatisfactory. And I hate to talk about my dad like that, God rest his soul, but it's legend in our family. So when Malcolm starts wanting to spend all this money on equipment, I'm like, you know what? Just let him spend whatever he wants to spend. And that was the right thing to do because he, he did it upright and we've been using all five cameras and that desk there that is our production desk. That's like a $600 desk from Lowe's. It's really nice. Now, the one thing I said no to that we never got was he wanted a 34-inch wide monitor, the big, huge monitor. And I always said no to that. I should have said yes to that because we really <laughs> need that. So anyway, you're correct. It's it's a great graphic. I didn't even know he knew Photoshop, but it's got Chris smoking a cigar. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a good picture. I can, I can it's see got, it in my head. It's got like the Battle of Bristol Stadium in the background with fireworks going off and stuff like that. What else is in it, Nick? You're interviewing Dax Hall. I'm interviewing Dax, right? Evan's just smiling. Evan's, Evan's just there with his, with his smile. 
So, so Jake, um, I apologize for that. <laughs> I t- I it was a good experience. You know, you, sometimes you have to get thrown into the fire and s- see what you can do with it. <laughs> well, you know, speaking of dads, I'm sure that was my dad attitude. It was like, well, you know, he's going to learn from it. So here we go. <laughs> but I, I do remember you had a bit of a deer in the headlights look. And, and that was the beginning of me learning that we needed to train people <laughs> to be on this podcast. And we're, we're still not great at that. So uh, here's your next trivia question. Uh, and these are estimates, but they're pretty close. Evan, how many podcasts did you host? I, I, I well, I'm going to use Jake's answer here. I mean, I thought it was about the 180 ish range. Okay. I, and I think my last pod, we, we had coach Fuente on in August of 21 and then I hosted one more after that. I would. I'm gonna go 184 as my last one. Well, uh, all I know is the total number. So if you started with 40, your co- total, uh, yeah. maybe just south of 150, maybe. Yeah, 134. Okay. Yeah. So Jake, how many do you think you hosted? You didn't host as long as that. Evan hosted no. like three years. I was only here one full year right. as the podcast host. I think so. Who. I would say probably 52, oh, would be dude. my guess. Did, did somebody tell you? No. Am we, I, I've got written down 53. Oh, I'm right there. He came into college with 30 credits. All right, Jake's always <laughs> had the brains. All right? he's, he's got and we're not, we're not counting the ones where I was in the fourth chair and Katie was hosting, Correct. I believe. Okay, so yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That, that sounds about right. Yeah, um, so, so we've always done two a week during football season, and Evan, you did them both. Yeah, did. By the time Jake started hosting, we went back and forth between him and Katie. I think I looked it up, and Katie hosted something like twenty-eight. I remember my the full year I did it; it was just me, I think. So my okay. my full senior year, but when I came back for my extra semester oh, okay. last fall, I think that was when we started trading off. Oh, so Katie split time with Geo. Yes. My, yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, so Katie split time with me fall semester last year, and then with Geo in the spring. So I've, t- I've told this story a bunch uh, privately. I don't think I've ever told it on this podcast. Um, first time Katie was ever on camera with us. We uh, we pulled her in. I don't remember who suggested. I think you guys said, yeah, I think she'd be really good. So we pulled her in and we put over there and put her over there in the fourth chair. And uh, I think I was on set back then. And, uh, you know, you, you, again, no training. Just, hey, go over there and sit in the fourth chair. And we'll tell you when you're supposed to go on, you know, and, and uh, so we cut over to her and she opened her mouth and started talking. And I thought, holy crap, she's good. Just hit the ground running right yes. off the bat. Katie's awesome. No nerves, smooth, just, I was just like, wow, that's a star right there. Now, Katie made a decision later to not go into sports media. She's uh, in grad school down in South, South Carolina. Carolina. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And she texted me, this, this, is, a, this is a sad story, gentlemen. It's happy, but it's sad. She texted me and said that she has an internship in uh, at UNC Chapel Hill coming up. Wow! So the thought of Katie in, in that Carolina <laughs> blue is just, bleh, you know, that that is that's funny because uh, her her sophomore year, I believe we we at thirty three oh four we wanted to see what people could do at the beginning of the year, so mm-hmm. we asked people to send in like clips of you know play-by-play or reporting and this is the first time i'd ever seen katie she sent in like a a whole reel of her in her kitchen recapping the six overtime game against uh carolina um and that was when we were like oh we've got something here like yeah. we we've got somebody that we can bring in and it not just be a bunch of guys on our studio shows so yeah, yeah. <laughs> and i and I, I still miss having the female element as, as a buddy of mine yeah, said yeah. you need women working with you it gets rid of the locker room smell yeah. <laughs> so, 100%. oh man so um let's talk about your uh your most memorable podcasts and uh, Evan, you, you brought one of them up. I, if you could pick one that's most memorable. So first of all, let's talk about the Fuente podcast. That was a big deal when we, when, you know, that was, now remember down the stretch of my senior year, we had started bringing guests on. I remember sitting on the couch next to David Teal. Yep. We had Teal on. We had Andy on. Yep. Um, and that was outside. I think coach Roby was the first tech, coach to come and do an episode probably but i remember getting the call from you right after i would graduated because i stuck around through the summer after i graduated before i fully jumped in in the role that i'm in now and then 
you know, I remember initially we were going to have him on. Do you remember they wanted him to come on like late May? It was a quick turn. I was like, Will, well, I don't have any way, but like that'd be tough. A graduation, people on vacations, any way we could push it later in the year. Mm-hmm. And I was really happy that I was not on that one. I think I was in the fourth tier for a question, but it was so great. Like you and Chris, like how are we talking this, about Fuente now? Yeah. Or yeah. just that one. So yeah. that, that was a big deal. And now obviously you guys have, you know, every coach on, it, it feels like all the time. But yeah. So, so that Fuente podcast, um, you know, uh, I've got several stories I can tell about that one. Number one, I, I go out in the parking lot and he's there with Pete Morris. They pull in and I go out there to, to, to meet him and bring him in the building. And uh, Fuente gets out of the, the car and he's wearing shorts. And, and <laughs> I'd never met him before, by the way. He had no clue who I was. And I blurred out, oh, so we're, get, we're getting the Fuente leg show today. No, you didn't. <laughs> no. Oh, my God. And he looked at me like I'd grown another head, you know, <laughs> it was just this neutral look like what? <laughs> so we bring him in here and, and, and I, I took some flack because you remember we had you do the intro. So you, cause you're polished at the intro. So you do the intro, we cut to the video and while the intro video was running, you left the chair and I That's sat right. down because I, I, by God, I'd been doing tech sideline for close to 25 years. And if the head football coach is on the podcast for the first time ever, right. I'm doing it. It was sorry, a big deal for Tia. Yeah. Sorry, Evan, but I'm doing it. That's the way it should have been all along. But then we did pull you in later where you got to do a fun with foo segment yep. where, you, where you did get, so you were a part of it. And the other thing I remember about that is, uh, so after it was over, I walked him out to the parking lot and I came back in and I walked back in the podcast room and you're standing there and you're just looking at me and your eyes are like this big and you hold up a hand for a high five and you're like, that was awesome. Was awesome. <laughs> it, it was, I mean, from a, from a macro sense, it, the evolution of what the Tech Sideline podcast is today, from audio only to that table behind this set to Facebook Live to everything that it had grown into be. To have the head football coach of Tech, yeah. it was such a big deal. I think it was a milestone moment in the podcast. So, like, that's one for me. I'll always say, like, I felt, you know, the saying, like, you know, try and leave a place better than you found it. Yeah. Like, for me to kind of go out and that be my second to last one. We did one more where I left. But, like, that was a really cool, like, moment to kind of pass it off to Jake and, like, the next evolution of the pod. But personally, my, my, my favorite podcast episode, two of them come to mind. Number one... This was still audio only. Um, we interviewed Makai Lewis yeah, the yeah. Monday after he won the <clears throat> national championship in 2019. And that was a really, like, again, cool moment that, you know, Peter Long, who was the SID at the time, it was really good, brought him over. And, you know, I've actually gotten to know Makai. We're about the same age. He's a He's just a great guy, and that was a really cool moment. Now, we actually did stream that one live over Facebook. Yeah, I guess you're right, yeah. Because I remember we came in, and we and we sat Makai around the table, and he, and he was wearing, you know, Makai's a, I'd call him an introvert, you know. So he comes in, and, and he's got the baseball cap, and it's pulled down, and I asked him to take the cap off because he's going to be on video, and we want people to be able to see him. And and I think he took it off at first, and then before we started recording, he's like, he, he had to put the hat back on. You know, well, he, he's he, just a kid. He, he, well, he, I mean, he was a, tr- a retro freshman, yeah. I think, at the time. But he's such a nice guy. He's just, he's, he's very shy. He's humble. He likes yeah. to give credit to everyone else. And that whole pod we spent just talking about, you know, every step of the way through yeah. the natty. And then the other one, and then I want to get Jake in here, the, the six overtime game against Carolina, getting to come back and, and, and to recap that. And, you know, it was always fun doing the recap episodes because you'd hear about Chris and his tailgate stories and <laughs> what he was up to. And, you know, I ran into this Atlanta Brave, you know, who was here. And, like, I, there was one baseball player. It was a Brave player that he tailgated with one time. It might have been the UNC Got to have been Brad Klontz. Had it might have been, been Brad. Yeah. And then, you know, like, hearing your perspective, like, you know, you guys get to be a fan and then we're covering the – like, I, I just always felt like we had such a great time recapping the entire day of what it's like to tailgate, the weather, the atmosphere, the lead up, the breakdown of the game. You know, that six overtime game was amazing. But I, I do think looking back on it, the best parts of our podcast, like I would always laugh when people would comment, like I skip, I skip to the 15 minute mark because I don't want to hear you guys go back and forth. It's like, that was the best part. <laughs> Coming on here, we got Will Stewart, we got Chris Coleman. Guys, how was your weekend? Oh, the Packers lost. So I'm going to send yeah, a different, well. you know, spot. I mean, it was, that was, that was fun. Like we built a, a cool community, the three of us and, yeah. uh, and all of our viewers. So yeah. anyways. So what about you? You actually got to, in, you, so when Foo was on, didn't, didn't you do a podcast with Foo? Uh, I, 
I may no, have. No, we only did the one. No, I interviewed Pry. You did Pry, that's on, right. On his first time on, and the, the TSLers out there in the message boards did not like my uh, my hosting. I don't know if you remember this. I do not. Um, it, w- it was right after Pry had done the whole snowball fight thing. Like, he went out there right after he got hired mm-hmm. and did the snowball fight thing. And we, we had agreed as a podcast group that we were going to have some fun with Brent at the end of the interview and ask him some fun questions. So I asked him which of his three former players that he's coached would he want on his team for a snowball fight. And I remember seeing the podcast comments and the the message boards were all like, why are we asking Brent Pry about who he wants in a snowball fight when we could be asking him real questions? And who's like, going to be the third string Mike linebacker? Yeah, who, who's, why are we throwing him softballs? And um, <laughs> I think I said, like, great to finally have you on. And somebody was like, the intern uh, is a... Uh, um, like disrespecting Pry, saying <laughs> finally, like he's got more important things to do. I was like, I, I don't know. I, I also like, again, I was happy to do it. Like very good experience. I found out I was doing that podcast about 12 hours before it was happening. I think Will wanted to do it. And then at the last second, you were like, you know what? Let's let Jake do it. Because um, I'd kicked Evan <laughs> off the set yeah. when Fuente was on. So I'm like, we got to put Jake on this. Which was fine. Again, like you guys should be on there. To, like I had, I believe me, no problem with that at all. Like, hey, can I, can I go on a quick tangent real quick? All can right. I tell one of my favorite message board stories about TSL? Okay. Real quick. <laughs> I, I love that. You know, first, I want to preface by saying, God, I love the TSL community. I... The, I am so lucky that when I go around campus and a restaurant, the amount of people who come up and say, loved listening to the TSL podcast. Hmm. This community helped shape me into who I am today as a person, a professional. So much love and respect to everyone at TSL. But, you know, one of my favorite stories, message boards, sophomore year of college, I'm calling Virginia Tech, North Carolina softball on the ACC Network Extra. It's Easter weekend. And I, at that time, I'm still uh, I'm pretty young as a broadcaster, right? Figuring it out. And um, this was a game. It was DeMore's first season. He actually got ejected in this game. It was a very high-stakes series. And I think it was a doubleheader on Easter Sunday that I called. And at the time, um, I would always I'd go on the boards and try and see. I, I don't know. I, I'd want to see if anyone had any feedback for me. No. And these <clears throat> fans on the message boards, they didn't know who I was. They were ripping me to shreds. Like, why does ESPN keep sending these Carolina biased broadcasters to call Virginia Tech games? When it was me and I was working for TSL at the time, and they were like, he said that she stepped up to the dish. Like, what's a dish in sports? And I was like, oh, I, mean, I got ripped. So I always let, I told myself, it's like, because you're supposed to call those games down the middle, right? Yeah, you're not being in favor when you're on there. And I said, if Tech fans are thinking that I am biased towards UNC, you're doing a good job. I'm doing a good job. You're doing it so right. So anyway, that's one of my favorite message boards. And I just hear that made me think of that. I so. hope one of them wasn't VT90. <laughs> I love VT90. That's my dad. I'll out him here. I think he's already mentioned it at some point, but yeah, he's always. I think he commented on David's uh, article about this regional uh, this weekend, and my dad commented, "Jake Lyman is back in town. Hope he gets to stick around." I was like, "I was like, well, come on, Dad." So I remember one time, Jake, that uh, somebody told me, "Yeah, Jake's calling the softball game this weekend," and I was like, "Oh, great." And I actually thought to myself, I'll bet I'll forget that. And when I tune in, I won't even realize it's him. Or, and that's exactly what happened. I tuned in to watch the softball game. Like inning and a half or two innings in, I'm like, oh, yeah, that's, that's Jake, Jake. Lyman. Nice. <laughs> um, so let's see. What else can we get into here, fellas? You had a message board story. Um, so your your current jobs. Um, so I was posting about you on the message board this morning. And there are people on the boards that didn't even know, Jake, that you are the voice of uh Vanderbilt women's basketball. Yeah. And uh, so tell us about that. How's that going? It's been great. It's been great. I mean, really cool that we've been able to make the NCAA tournament this year after last year. I Before I even moved to Nashville, the team had three season-ending injuries uh, of three starters. Wow. So last year and was you tough. went that you went there in the fall of... 22. 22. So yeah. November of 22 was my first game. Um, so last year, the team was kind of behind the eight ball only had eight or nine players most of the season. Still got some big wins, but uh, 
I think 12 and 19 finish. And this year it's been, it's been really cool to, to get through this run and, you know, get to call an NCAA tournament game tonight as we're recording on Wednesday. Yeah. The by the 20th. way, I forgot to mention this is being recorded on Wednesday, <laughs> March 20th. Yes. I'm not sure. I think we're going to post it today or tomorrow. Yes. So, so yes, by the time most people hear or, or watch this, you will have already called a play in game. Yes. Playing Columbia tonight. So hopefully I'll be sticking around and uh, we'll, call the game against Baylor on Friday. Um, but yeah, it, it's been awesome to, to get a chance to do this in the SEC. And big shout out to Andrew Allegretta, who Tech fans will remember as the voice of women's basketball and baseball before Evan. Um, he's now the voice of football and baseball at Vanderbilt and was a key component in uh-huh. getting me over to Nashville. Yeah, very nice. Um, so it's a, does Vandy have much of a history of going to the NCAA tournament? Yeah, they were very good back in the 90s to... 2000s uh went to 15 straight ncaa tournaments from 99 to 2014 wow and 25 out of 26 uh in that stretch as well i did not know that went to a final four in 1993 yeah yeah so evan you've been what what season is this for you calling tech women's basketball this is year number three wow you've been for some fun stuff i mean it's it's been you got all the rings (laughs) (laughs) I'm very lucky that I was included <laughs> in that. Um, it, it's been it's been such a joy, Will. Like yeah. it, it really has. I I cannot. I, I wish I could go to the tallest mountain in Virginia and just shout it. And I think everybody knows it, but I just cannot say enough good things about Kenny Brooks. He is just like he's a remarkable coach, but who he is as a person is. I mean, he's one of the best humans I know. Like and I'm not just saying that. This is he. Um, it's the way that he's built his program, um, the family. Like everyone says, oh, we're we're a big family. It's just, it's different over there. He he's a he's a girl dad. He's he's coached his daughters that have come through the program. He, in the way that he interacts with the staff to the managers, I'm telling you, he's just. I I would do anything for that guy. I would like if I had a kid, I would want my kid to one day if they were ever talented enough, and I was not a good athlete, so we'd probably not be having this conversation. <laughs> I want my daughter to. Um, to just be like, you know, shaped by Kenny Brooks as a person, let alone a coach. And I, I just, I feel so like profoundly impacted by him as a radio broadcaster being around him for three years. Yeah. So uh, you're running this business and being over in Blacksburg since 2018. Of course, we've met a lot of you guys from the sports media and analytics program. And there is this, this voodoo hold that Kenny has over the kids who come through that program. They all love him. And I sniffed that out really early and I was like, wow, these kids really love their Virginia Tech women's basketball. And this was before they'd really started to achieve, mm-hmm. you know, at, at, at a high level. Um, and at first I thought eh, it's just because Kenny gives all gives them all kinds of access. But it's not just that. More than that. Yeah. I think it, it was big for, for 3304 Sports before we were able to call football and men's basketball. The big games to call were the women's games. Yeah. And Kenny would give us post-game interviews for social. And, um, no, he's he's been awesome. I was actually going to mention, I think one of my favorite podcast episodes I did was probably a few weeks before I left for Nashville. We had Kenny on. It was me, David, and Kenny talking. I felt like we could have talked for three hours. Yeah. Um, it, it was awesome. He's great. Kenny will uh, you ask him a question and he will hold the mic for a while. Yeah. Which is so fun is getting to do the radio show with him and interviews. Like he gives such thoughtful answers. Like I'll, I'll go do a Kenny Brooks show and I, I prep like crazy because I'm always worried that like I'm going to run out of things to talk about. So I'll prepare like 45 questions, which is way too much. Yeah. I might get 15 in with that. Like it's, yeah. it's um, he, he is so good and he's so authentic. Like who he is, what tech fans see of him is exactly who he is off the floor. Yeah, and, and he has he has started what uh, what I'll call a new age of new golden age of Virginia Tech women's basketball. The first one was ninety nine through roughly two thousand four when Bonnie Henriksen was here. And Bonnie was admired and to some extent beloved, but not to the level that Kenny is. Um and uh, there was a lot of attention on the women's program back then. Yeah. And from 05 through, you know, probably three or four years ago, as you guys know, that attention went away. So it's back now. And I really, uh, I look at the, the, we'll call them the women on the team that are going to be here next year after Kitley. And I think, I think Georgia's going to go on her way. We'll see. Um, they got it. They got a, 
I don't want to make it sound this way, but they got a bit of heavy burden to carry starting next year. They, they have to build on what's been done. Well, you're talking about, I, I think, and again, I want to respect how great Renee Dennis was, right, and what she was right. able to do in the 80s. But I think that, you know, Liz and George are going to go down the two best players in the history of the program. I played pickup basketball with Renee Dennis. Oh, wow. And um, that was fine. This was th- 35 years ago when women's basketball players were not as good as they are now. I would want no piece of Georgia Amor or Liz Kitley on a basketball court. No, thank you. And, and what she was able to do, like, I, I mean, I've read about and go on a tangent, like 86, I think they upset number one Old Dominion who um, won the national championship the year prior. Like they had some good stuff. ODU was player. the original Tennessee. Right. Yeah. Yep. Um, but I, I think the tough part, yes, yes, the on the court stuff. And I think, I think the world of the players he's got now, I think that, Karis Baker, uh, Clara Strack, Carly Wenzel, Samaya Suffren, Mackenzie Nelson, who's redshirting this year, should be a really good basketball player. And then the class coming in, Clara Silva's would be a top ten overall prospect if she wasn't um, an international yeah. recruit. I mean, he's recruiting at such a high level. But I, I think to me, will the yes, the on court production. You're talking about the best duo in the country is going to be hard to place. But think about the impact. That, that Liz Kitley and Georgia Amor have had on Virginia Tech, period. I think this is what makes the women's game better than the men right now is that we, as fans, we get to see the same players for three, four, five years. There's no one and done on the men's side, and you're learning, oh, Kentucky's got new players, Duke, North Carolina. It's so hard to keep up with them. But Georgia and Liz have embraced this community yeah. in such a way. Like, they are going to be hokey legends forever and ever. And that's going to be something that, you know, it, it just – it makes you appreciate what they've been able to do on and off the court in five years. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, Liz is, Liz is Bruce Smith, Michael Vick, Angela Tincher level, you know, because of the numbers. And, and yeah, I, I love Georgia just as much, you know? So. And I hope that Georgia comes back. I really, really do. But yeah. you know, when it, when it's all said, we're going to look back on this era. I just think it, the impact they've had on this university, you even think about, I mean, that's the final four last year to me and you would have great perspective on this. The final four last year is one of the greatest moments in the history. of that, that was actually my final call. was one of the most iconic moments in the history of Tech Athletics. You know, and we'll remember it for a long time. Very cool. So, Jake, um, what, what has it been like? To, so, Vandy was 12-19 and 19 last year? 12-19. and 19. And this year, NCAA tournament, that's probably been pretty cool for it, you. It really is. Uh, Shea Ralph is the head coach, and she was a player at UConn back in the late 90s, uh, won national championship in 2000. Rings, rings a bell. Yeah. yeah, she played for Gino, and then she went and coached at Pitt for a little bit as an assistant, but then went back to UConn and won six more national championships as an assistant. Um, and she came down to Vanderbilt. This is her third season. Uh, her associate head coach is her husband, uh, Tom Garrick. Mm, that's who interesting. <laughs> you, you may, uh, some, some people may remember he played at Rhode Island and played in the NBA for a few years. Um, what what era did he play at Rhode Island? Because, you know, they were in the Atlantic 10 with Virginia yes, Tech. Yes, I want to say 80s. Okay, um, so a little bit before Tech being in the Yes, may, maybe early 90s, but yeah, he, he played in the NBA for four or five years. Um, so it's it's really cool to have that family atmosphere for them, you know, they, they literally family yes. <laughs> they bring their daughter on all the trips and, and it's great and uh coach ralph told me at the end of last season she said jake don't get used to all this time off in march um and i was like i'm telling you i'm not nice. she, she knew what she had this year she said at the beginning of the season the goal was to make it to the ncaa tournament and here we are <laughs> so do they play on the weird raised floor yes yeah, so they play so, so tell me about that because I've, I've lost touch with Vanderbilt basketball, but I do remember back in the day, um, I don't even know the name of their Coliseum. So fill all that in for it's me. It's Memorial Gymnasium is, is the name of it. Oh, it's uh, a gym. Uh, yes. Yeah. It's, it is one of the, it's very strange, like coming from Castle where it's so compact and everybody's right on top of you and going to Memorial where it's spread out and there's no seats in the corners. It's just like a, it's like an addition sign, like a plus sign is how the, the gym is built. Um, and it's strange. The first time I called a game there, you you sit down in your spot and you're mostly below the floor, your eye level. The floor is probably about here and you're looking over top of it. That would so drive me crazy. It, it can be tough. Sometimes there are times when there's a play happening in the opposite corner. And I have to say, there's a turnover over there or something like they're, they're pointing the other way. I have no idea what happened, but um, it, it definitely is an adjustment. 
uh, especially coming from uh, Kong games at Tech for, for 3304, where we were all the way up in the crow's nest. <laughs> oh, that's and you, right. You had the bird's eye view, and now I'm down below the court. It's a, it's a little bit of an adjustment, but uh, it really is a cool place. And we, uh, after Vandy beat Mississippi State to open SEC play and was 16 or 14 and 1 at that point. Yeah. And Florida was the next uh, opponent, and it was a dollar ticket day. It was their promotion, and it was pretty packed in there. And the, the atmosphere, when, when it gets rocking, uh, Memorial's a tough place to go and win. How many people does it seat? 15? It's a big gym. It is a big gym. 15,000. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Uh, it, it might be less than that. It might be 13, somewhere in there. But it's, Oh, man, you're looking bad here, dude. You're supposed to know exactly. <laughs> I should know <laughs> the exact the exact attend, uh, capacity. I do not. Yeah. Um, it is big, though. It, it's a big gym. So uh, uh, back in 99, when Virginia Tech played in the Sweet 16, and or excuse me, they hosted first couple of rounds of NCAA tournament, um, they had about 10,000 fans. And this is back when admission to Virginia Tech women's basketball games was free. For the NCAA tournament, they charged uh, $10 a game. So the people that were there did pay, but they had two capacity crowds in Castle. And what I wondered was, I mean, even the Tech women hadn't played in front of crowds that big. How would it affect them? And they played great. I don't even remember the first round. It was against St. Peter's or something like that. And then the second round, Tech was a four seed, and they were playing a five seed, if I remember correctly. They played Auburn. And the, it's one of the most nuts atmospheres I've ever seen, and Tech played well. How did Vanderbilt respond when you're talking about that game where they had more fans than usual? They they won that game by six, I believe. It was it was kind of a, a rock fight of a game. Nobody making shots, turnovers, but uh, last few minutes, Vandy kind of took over. I think the one of the best games that Vanderbilt played this year, and it's going to sound strange because they lost by 17, was actually at South Carolina. And I'm telling you, if you you've never been to colonial life i don't think I'm not uh that arena is absolutely ridiculous for women's basketball games i've been in there for stuff not for a basketball game. they packed it to the brim like an hour before tip-off it was the the whole lower bowl was almost completely filled i i couldn't believe it but uh vandy seems to have responded well they played well in that game but you know south carolina nobody's beaten them yet this season uh it, it's tough to do especially on their their own floor which i think they've won close to Nine 60, million games in 60 a row. or 70 games in a row yeah. there so um you know if if uh if we end up playing on sunday in a in a pat castle coliseum at least they've seen that before okay all right um so let's talk serious for a second you're both calling games on the radio a lot of traveling a lot of food your boy, your boy is getting fat, or what's going on there? I mean, I, 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 I am uh, down forty pounds. I've been really working out, uh, so I'm, I'm close to getting to where I want to be. You know, on our soundboard, we do have a button that, like, that, that creates applause, but I don't know which button it is. <laughs> Press the wrong button. <laughs> <laughing. laughs> yeah, like, Nick says I'm going to no. press the wrong button. It'll be the laughter button. Uh, yeah, I mean, J, you know. And I get to travel with two teams, and they both, you know, the, the common theme is they eat all the time. Like, college, college kids fed. eat all the time. And, but I mean, they get it. Like, they're, they're working out all the time, right? So there's constantly food around you. And uh, it's so easy, right, to just eat. And if you don't really exercise, I mean, and, you know, we have jobs that are, require a lot of sitting and watching. Yes. <laughs> so, I mean, Jake's <laughs> always been in great shape. But I mean, yeah, like for me, it, it, it's definitely been a, um, I'm working on it. It's been, you know, something. How I'm long did it take you to lose 40 pounds? Uh, about two months. Dang, that sounds that's unhealthy. Awesome. That That's like a, that's like two months is, is January maybe, 3rd. Maybe t- that's like four pounds a week. Is that what you're telling me? Yeah, I, I did uh, the keto diet and um, which is like zero carbs at right. all and uh, intermittent fasting. And um, a lot of exercise, and uh, yeah, I mean, I've just, I've stayed to it. Like zero sugar. I have not had any alcohol since New Year's Eve. I don't really drink much to begin with, but yeah. I've just really like honestly, if you do that, it's not it's not crazy to 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 drop it pretty quickly. So I think if you cut out sugar and cut out alcohol, that's it's amazing. That's you just see in your face right start. away in like two weeks the sugar, like the you know your face starts to take a little bit more shape. So anyways, not to totally go on a tan, but well, but Jake will tell me it, it, it's, no, it's it, hard it's to eat on the road. It is. I might have to start to get on on that too because it you know you'll be on the road for about twenty four hours for a regular conference road game Wednesday to Thursday or Saturday to Sunday, and I swear they feed us five times. 
it, yeah. you'll you'll get a sandwich for the plane or the bus, and then you'll get uh, dinner when you get there, and then breakfast buffet, and then lunch, and then post game meal. It's like I don't pizza on the afterwards. What do you guys do? Pizza post game. Uh, Sometimes, but we like, I'm missing a meal right now back at the hotel and I'm kind of happy about it. I don't need, I don't need it. I'm going to get fed again in a few hours. Podcast. Yes, please get me out of the hotel. Um, so, so Bill Roth will be mad at us if we don't talk about the sports media and analytics program, which I think he started up in about 2016. Correct. That's not right. So Virginia tech, uh, school of communications, they had a, a multimedia journalism major. And I think that's where the, uh, the sports, uh, journalism kids win at that point in time and he created a sports media and analytics which is you know mostly broadcast sports journalism but they, but they've also got a a writer's arm that uh and and like so when i first started wanting to get interns from bill's program it was all about the writing mm-hmm. i never thought it would turn into this with all of this audio video stuff and i and i it makes sense looking back on it. What do you think Bill Ross is going to do? You know, he's a broadcaster. He's a radio guy yeah. now and, you know, a TV guy at times. So um, you guys, when you were when you were coming out of high school, so the big schools are Syracuse, of course. What's the name of their journalism school? Newhouse. Newhouse. Arizona State's good in broadcast journalism, right? Yep. Sports Cronkite. journalism. Um, I know that Northwestern is more uh, writing. writing. Um, who else is big players out there in the... Maryland solid. Missouri is yeah. another big one. That's right. Missouri is a good one. Yeah. Yeah. Maryland is a good one too. More writing at Maryland, but still good broadcasting. Fordham uh, is one that's kind of that mm-hmm. for, for those New York city kids right. that want to stay out there. Yeah. They, they have a lot of them. To Fordham. Yep. Yeah. So when, so when you guys were little, like uh, I remember interviewing Bill Roth 27 years ago. Wow. And he talked about growing up in Pittsburgh and listening to, you know, the, the, baseball broadcasts over the radio um geo I've, i haven't had a one one time i'm going to have giovanni heater on the podcast and we're going to talk about uh he he was calling games in high school uh, i think he was calling lacrosse because lacrosse is big up there um and he had his own little youtube channel it's called orange heat, orange heat. The, the first podcast geo ever hosted I had bought an orange heat t-shirt. Huh, um, I remember that. Yeah. And, and so before he came in to host his first podcast, I hung the orange heat t-shirt right behind his chair. That's awesome. Um, but you know, what did like, what did you guys do growing up? Um, were, I know Bill recruits a lot of kids who are, who are hotly recruited by the other schools. What was your, what was, so you were first, what was your story when you were young? So, um, yeah, my, my story, I, kind of in a nutshell, I started doing public address announcing for my sister's softball games when I was in middle school. Now batting number two, Will Stewart. And I loved it. And then uh, when I was in the sixth grade, I started my own online radio show uh, called Sports World with Evan Hughes. I did a 30 minute show on blog talk radio every day over the summer. And nobody listened, but I did it every day. And I loved it. I actually had Bill on as a guest. The first time I ever reached out to Bill, he came on as a guest in, uh, when I was in the eighth grade. Flash, flash forward all these years later, you know. But really, it took off for me when I got to high school. I, I started my own uh, called Patriot Talk Live. I stripped it from Tech Talk Live for uh, all Patrick Henry High School athletics, doing play-by-play of all of our games, home and away football games, basketball, baseball, golf, wrestling. We did everything. Yeah. And I, like, fell in love with play-by-play in high school. So... Well, you know, kids played sports. Like we did a coach's show, like TTL, like at a restaurant with our head football coach. And like, nice. it was, I, I, so for me, like I was firmly pit, bit by the broadcasting, the play-by-play bug when I was 13. And then Bill had come back from UCLA the summer going into my senior year of college. And I, you know, I, I always wanted to go to tech. I mean, I don't know, but at the time I was not planning on coming to tech because I did not think the program was here that I needed. And when Bill came back, it was kind of like, I reached out to him, like, hey, do you remember coming on my radio show four years ago? Here's all I've done. And he did, and I came up and toured, and he kind of was like, listen, here's the blueprint, and this is what we're going to do. And I was like, I'm in. Yeah. So that's my story. Now, what most people don't know about you is that your dad played soccer for Tech, right? Yes, sir. 81 to 85, and he was the first GA for Tech men's, uh, men's soccer under the GOAT, Jerry Shanae. Yeah. 
Very cool. So you, uh, I mean, you were certainly aware of tech and uh, oh yeah, you had tech oh my god. I mean, I mean, tie rod. I've been I've been coming to tech games since I was eight or nine. So like, I mean, I grew up a huge tech fan and would come to so many games a year. But I was I understood like, and I'm sure Jake feels the same way. Like, my dream was broadcasting, and I wasn't gonna go to a, as much as I love tech. I needed to have that 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 support system. Yeah. And at the time, people what people don't fully realize, even and Bill would tell you this, you know, Andrew Allegretta was massive yep. in my development as a broadcaster. He was here running an internship program before there was the SMA major. And I actually, when I came up on a visit, Bailey Angle hung out with me for an entire day. Like Bailey's like a big brother to me. He was a huge difference maker in me coming here and really took me under his wing. And um, so there are people like Bailey Angle, Danny Noakes, somebody who placed in the Jim Nance Award rankings in 2014. Like there were people, uh, Morgan Conklin Bowen, who's calling games on ACC Network now as an analyst. There were people, but the, the major really expedited the process of putting us on the map once Bill came back and kind of gave it, you know, some new life. So, so Jake, when you were, uh, considering first of all uh talk about your 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 announcer things i say the word so before every question i ask <laughs> can't stop i know i do it i cannot stop it. so evan so jake so evan so jake so anyway jake when you, were, when you were in high school um like how far along was the program at that point in time your your dad graduated from tech both my parents went to tech. both of them yep, yeah so i grew up a Hokies fan uh, but i was kind of in the same boat as evan even though i was more of a writer in high school i didn't do a ton of broadcasting i did a couple of baseball games and maybe a football game here and there, but we didn't, I didn't have the fourth foresight to make my own Patriot talk live or anything like that. So I was the editor in chief of my high school newspaper and I wrote online about the Tennessee Titans. And that was most of my experience. Titans fan. But I wanted to, I wanted to be a broadcaster. I grew up watching Detroit Tigers games and Mario and Pembo was their broadcaster. And that's the guy who got me into play by play. Um, and I was looking at Syracuse. I went and toured Syracuse, and then my dad reached out to Bill and said, hey, my, my son wants to get into sports media. Like, would you meet with him? And we came down the weekend that Clemson was here and game day was here, um, and Bill took us on a full tour. 2017? Yes. Yeah. yeah, so the fall of my senior year of, co- uh, of high school. And we went on a full tour. Bill showed us around Moss Arts Center and all of that, and... Uh, before we even got on 81, I told my dad, this is where I want to be. And I applied early decision the next day and the rest is history. (laughs) Nice. So you guys, uh, you guys and David Cunningham and other people you want to name were really instrumental in, because this was a program that was just starting up and you guys built the student sports media organization, 3304 sports. and, And it's run like like a legit media organization, yeah. you got your website, you got yeah. your articles, you brought you you call games, the whole deal. And you guys all, uh, how much of that did Bill tell you what to do, and how much of it was you guys kind of setting the course? Walk me through that. Great question. I think so. For me, I I remember one night um, I couldn't sleep, and I was just it was like a random like January night, and I was thinking about like what ways can we elevate SMA in this new program. And it just hit me like, we need to have a, a student sports broadcasting station, like a way for students to call games. Yeah. Because you look at Syracuse, WAER is this iconic student run sports broadcasting station that calls all the games. I was like, we, we're not going to be able to take the next step as a program until we do that. And so I got up, uh, I was living at the village, which isn't even called the village anymore, by the way. Whatever it's called, what's it called now? A light. A light. And I like started typing away all these ideas. Like you ever just like wake up in the middle of the night, like you got like your, your mind's racing, and it's like ten thirty at night. And I call Bill's like I gotta see. It. Like are you are you around? And he's like I am. I drove to his house, and I was like here here's this idea I have. Like with like and he's always had this idea too. But like we need to do this now. And a month later, thirty three or four sports was launched, and it just kind of. I don't know, to answer your question directly about did Bill, like Bill does a great job at being hands off and letting the sports director and the team run it. But from when we were in school, it started with, okay, we're going to do broadcasting. And then, you know, David comes to me, one of my best friends, like, hey man, I love the idea that they're for, but I don't want to broadcast, I want to write. Can I start the writing side? Absolutely. Liam Smet wants to take photos and do graphics. Sure, do that. Let's start a podcast. And it just kind of like every year just kept morphing into 
what it has become now. So I think it's great. Like, I mean, I was the first sports director, then Jake, and then Tyler Katz, and now Nick. I mean, you know, it really, trust me, I feel like I have less on my plate since I've graduated college, since I'm no longer the sports director, because it is a full-time job. And um, it's a lot of moving parts. But to me, 3304 Sports is the 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 baseline of what SMA, they go hand in hand. You, it's peanut butter and jelly. You can't have one without the other right now. I don't think I've ever seen a college major where you get as much experience in what you're going to wind up doing for a living. It was a no-brainer to hire David Cunningham because he'd already done <laughs> for 3304 for like two years what I wanted him to do for Tech Sideline. I, I never trained David in anything. I taught him, you know, how to use our WordPress setup or whatever. But, you know, I hired David and I said, okay, just go be David Cunningham, you know. And and so it's it's remarkable the amount of real-world experience you guys get. Yeah, I mean, that's what I would tell people when I was sports director at our beginning of the semester meetings is, hey, if you want to just go four years at Virginia Tech and get a sports media and analytics yeah. degree, you're not going to get a job. You have to go out and do it. You have to go broadcast or write or do podcasts or whatever you want to do. And I feel like we've had great buy-in with that, and it's showing. I mean, us calling NCAA tournament games this weekend. Kevin D. Domenico was a AAA radio broadcaster his first year out of college. Um, Andy Losey is calling games down in North Carolina. So um, it's really been awesome just to see, you know, you put in all the work. And like Evan said, it was a full-time job. If the Comrex doesn't have batteries, that's on the sports director to figure it yeah. out. If the credentials aren't working out. so You're on um, call 24-7. Yes. yes. <laughs> and yeah, I know you guys have been around. I, I, I think I was having a conversation with David recently, and I don't remember what school we were talking about. It may have been Boston College. I've gotten so used to the model here of, you know, the, the ACC network has geared up. And there's all these games you got to stream. And so I, I listened to this baseball game streaming yesterday. They've laid your radio call over top of it. Uh, Jake, you've called softball and, and other sports for the ACC streaming. Um, so it was, it was really fortuitous that that came into being at the time that the SMA program was growing. No doubt. Yep. So I'm used to the idea that a lot of what goes on at the ACC network and it's streaming is actually done by students. Like even, even if, even if correct me if I'm wrong, even if it's an ACC network game that you're watching on the actual linear network, there's a lot of students involved. Yeah. Right? Most of them probably. Well, I, yeah. yeah. So, and, and then David's like, yeah, it's not that way at other schools at some schools like whatever school we were talking about, he said they actually like freelance that stuff out. They hire people that come in and, and it's just, that must've been a big selling point for Bill to be able to say to you guys, not only are we smaller and you'll have the opportunities, but here comes a whole freaking network that you'll have opportunities. Yeah. At. You can call games on the ESPN app. Like that's a big selling point. Is Your parents can listen to you call games on the app. Yeah. It's, I mean, that's, the first time I remember calling a game, I think it was soccer was my first game ever. And it's like, it's really cool to be able to say, Hey, if you want to listen to me broadcast, go to the ESPN app. I mean, yeah. as a 16 or 17 year old or sorry, 19 or 20 year old kid, like that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. No. And you know, one thing too, to keep in mind, you know, the SMA program does so much for the, the writing the on air, but I tell you what, for, for a long time, Hokie vision has an amazing internship program. And they've had there. There are, I'd say, of all the tech com alums that are in sports, like eighty percent are behind the scenes in production. So the fact that the AC Network here at Tech, when you're watching a softball game, and ninety percent of the the crew are students, like you said, it's not that way at other places. And their internship program is so good. So I always try and make sure you know we want to shed light to like we're the ones that are on air. But the people behind the scenes are the real MVPs. Like the, the the lighting, the audio, the directors, the producers, all that stuff. And they they don't always get enough love. And you know to give credit to people like Jed Castro and yeah. uh, other people at Hokie Vision that have done this for a long, long time. It's been really cool to have now the opportunity for those that want to go behind the scenes and make hype videos or work broadcast. Or not be not on everybody air and have both. Not everybody wants to be on camera. Like you take uh, Jordan Long. Yeah, yeah, um, Jordan. <laughs> 
Jordan works his butt off. Yeah. You know, he's there with the men's basketball team all the time, shooting all this. Is Jordan still a student or? No, he's, he's a couple years older than us. Yeah, okay. so. so he's older. But uh, there, there are examples like that of in the SMA program of kids just working their butts off, you know. But anyway, Jordan, Jordan does, I'll see his tweets and he'll be like, hey, finish this at 4 a.m., <laughs> you know, and, and not everybody wants to be on camera. They want to be doing stuff like that. I'm telling you, we talk or you write, which is not easy but it, i was always said there's just so much that goes behind the scenes we're the yeah. we're the lucky ones you get to show up and, and broadcast the yeah. games yeah so gentlemen what time is it oh guys you guys need to go it's 145 you need to be out of here at 144 and you need to be out of here at 145 perfect timing so, that was perfect so excellent <laughs> appreciate you guys coming on um good luck i hope you each get to call a game on sunday that you're on one side calling for tech and he's on the other side or i guess down the road from you calling for Vanderbilt. So I appreciate you guys coming on and sharing stuff with us. And uh, so Evan, say bye. It's great to be back. Um, hope everyone's doing well. And um, just, I love this community and thanks for uh, taking me under your wings when I was here under co in college and, and still doing so and supporting me and all I'm doing here at tech. So thank you, TSL. Uh, I, it's really, it is crazy to be back here uh, again, sitting in a chair five, four or five days ago before selection Sunday, I couldn't have dreamed that I'd be back this week. So uh you know, TSL did a lot to help me get to where I am today and uh, thankful for you having me back. And hopefully this isn't the last time I'm sitting on yeah. the set. Thank you, Will. Yeah, I wanted to give you guys a chance to talk because I have this habit of cutting off the podcast really quick. And the guest is like, <laughs> oh, I didn't get to say anything. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, I appreciate that. If I've got my numbers right, that's episode 355 of the Tech Sideline podcast. Thank you. And we'll see you next time.